From the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi everybody, welcome to this CUBE Conversation. I'm Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman is here with me. We're going to break down AWS, kind of give you a, a mid-year, what's happened so far this year with all the events that we've been covering and what to look forward to. Uh, the NYC Summit is coming up, Stu. Um, it's been a big year, obviously we, we came off a reInvent. Amazon's got a $30 billion run rate business growing at 40 plus percent per year. Stu, that means they're putting nine billion of incremental revenue every year into the cloud business, the marketplace, that growth. Uh, that's roughly as large as the entire Microsoft cloud business, which is astounding. Yeah, Dave, Dave that, that, that's, uh, that's the point uh, Amazon definitely has been making for a couple of years, and you're absolutely right. Uh, Microsoft is definitely growing at a faster pace than Amazon, and they're running, what, 75, yeah, 80%, 70 percent, plus, uh, yeah. but off a much smaller number. So the incremental ad that Amazon has been throwing off the last couple of years, every year they're adding more than in Azure every year. So absolutely, uh, Amazon you know, is the lead horse out there, and while you know, the horses on the track behind them are trying fast to catch up, uh, Amazon, it, it's, it, if you talk about infrastructure as a service, AWS is still the lead horse out there. Well, the big question is, will that attenuate? And we were at, uh, remember the, the Nutanix inaugural, uh, Nutanix.next, D. Raj Pandey, who's a very smart guy, somebody we respect a lot, one of the fundamental assumptions they were making is eventually the law of large numbers will catch up to them, and now it very well may, but it hasn't yet. I asked John Lovelock, can a company the size of Amazon, $30 billion you know, company, grow at 42% a year, is that sustainable? And he said, absolutely, there's nothing to stop them. Now, you know, who, who knows, who has the crystal ball? What are your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, so Dave, what we saw is Amazon's not sitting still. You know, they always like to say it's always day one, uh, and if you look at where they're growing, the products that they keep throwing off, the innovation that they keep moving on, and the flywheel that they've had first of customer acquisition with all of the innovations that they're putting out there, and the flywheel that I've been talking about the last couple of years, the flywheel of the data, uh, which is something we want to be a little concerned about how much data Amazon actually does have, both Amazon AWS and Amazon with all those uh, intelligent uh, devices that are in our homes and connecting everything together. Uh, some people are a little concerned about that. The government's a little bit concerned about that. Um, but uh, absolutely, Amazon is growing everywhere. We've seen Amazon going into sub-segments of the market, going into verticals, and going just really broad and really deep. So absolutely, I don't see anything slowing Amazon down. It is a company that you know, continues to impress. One of the challenges, I think, though, Stu, that, that Amazon does have, and, and this came out of the Reinforce conference a couple weeks ago in Boston, which was a conference for security practitioners, a lot of CISOs, uh, Chief Information Security Officers, the number one challenge that came out of that when you talk to practitioners was their ability to keep up with the innovations that Amazon is putting forth. So, you know, I, I wonder, we're going to talk to some, some commercial customers, you'll see them down the summit, probe to see if in fact that's part of their challenge, just the pace at which Amazon brings out new features. But we've done, gosh, we've covered eight events, uh, or will have covered eight events this year, uh, eight productions. You know, it started in the UK where we covered a, a public sector healthcare, and then we did the AWS Summit London. Really all about um, both public sector in the UK, as well as the summit in the UK, innovations in the UK around cloud, et cetera, cloud adoption. 12,000 people at the AWS London Summit. Now you covered uh, uh, Remars which was not, the cube wasn't there, but you were there. What was that show all about? Yeah, so first of all, it's an Amazon show, not an AWS show, but absolutely showed underneath where AWS fits into the fulfillment centers of Amazon, and it was about uh, re-Mars. So Mars, a play, of course, on space, but it was uh, machine learning, automation, robotics, and space. So you had the cool Blue Origin stuff. They actually brought in Robert Downey Jr., talked about how he's going to save the planet with, uh, uh, you know, robotics and intelligence out there to help clean up pollution in the globe uh, and, and the like, but it was a phenomenal show. Uh, but uh, what I said is actually, it's going to show a little bit underneath the covers of Amazon, similar to what we've seen from AWS at the reInvent shows over the years, because, you know, we all know how many boxes are coming to our, you know, <laughs> our, our, our place of home every day and how fast that's going. And so this is 
what's happening underneath the, the robotics and machine learning. A lot of those are AWS services uh, that are powering that. So it was a fascinating show, Dave, and absolutely showed uh, the relationship between you know, Amazon, the parent company, and AWS, all of those cloud services that help feed the, the, the bigger business. Now in June, uh, theCUBE covered the DC Public Sector Summit. Uh, this is Teresa Carlson's gig, uh, she's the host. Uh, actually, Andy Jassy was there this time. He wasn't there last year when, when you and I were covering it. Um, and of course, that's all about bringing cloud to public sector, not just federal, but all public sector. It includes uh, a nonprofit and education, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, the big story there is, of course, Jedi. We're talking about tens of billions of dollars you know, going to uh, a contract. Oracle, of course, is fighting it. Um, it's going into the courts, uh, I guess. Uh, there's been a number of reviews. Oracle won't give up. You know, it's Oracle. Um, Amazon clearly is the front runner. Uh, last I read, it was down to, to AWS and Microsoft, with AWS being the, the, the lead contender there. We'll see what happens. I think a decision is coming down uh, this month, July of, of 2019. Uh, but it's really, again, about bringing cloud innovations to public sector. Public sector tends to take things a, a little bit later than the commercial. Like for instance, last year they announced the, 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 the VMware on AWS was available. Yep. Um, so you'll see those kinds of things come maybe a year later. Uh, but it's another, again, another big show. There were you know, 12, 13,000 people there at the uh, DC Convention Center. Yeah, and Dave, you, you, when you talk about the critique of what's happening in Amazon, as Amazon goes deeper into all of these verticals, how do they help get that information uh, you know, to the user in a way that they need to run their businesses? So uh, my co-host for New York City is Corey Quinn, was listening to his podcast this morning, and he said that's where you know, Amazon's got you know, dozens of blogs, they've got so many announcements, uh, they haven't done a really good job, something we've seen many companies do, how do I get to you know, that business role and put it in you know, verbiage that they understand as opposed to just, hey, we had a thousand new features come out this year and they're awesome and you should use everything. Uh, so uh, you know, that, that's something that uh, you know, the industry as a whole needs to do better at and Amazon, just in the nature of how fast they're moving, is something that they should be able to do a better job of. And John Furrier is also going to be in, in New York City and one of the things he was uh, stressing at, at Reinforce was the marketplace. We had Dave McCann on. Um, the, the just rocketing, I think it was 100,000 su su security subscriptions, I think it was a million <laughs> uh, subscriptions in total, so just an amazing uh, 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 momentum in the marketplace. But Reinforce was all about security, deep dives on security, chief information security officers. Um, what came out of that show, the big takeaway was, was uh, the head of AWS's uh, uh, security, the Chief Information Security Officer, Schmidt, said, this narrative in the industry that the sky is falling doesn't do anybody any good. Um, we it's not productive. We should be more positive. The state of the cloud union is, is good, like the President of the United States said, the state, state of the union is strong. Um, having said that, Amazon talks about the shared security model. The practitioners that we talked to said, yeah, shared model, Amazon's going to secure the the infrastructure, the storage, the, the, the compute, uh, the database, we are responsible for our end and, and it really is on us to make sure uh, that we are secure. So again, back to that point about the pace of innovation that Amazon is putting forth is a challenge for people. Uh, AWS Imagine is also going down, I think this week. Yeah. Uh, what's that show all about? Yeah, so uh, it's in Seattle and it's, it, you mentioned the public sector one in DC, which is government agencies, nonprofits, and education. So Imagine is a subset of that. Uh, my understanding is the education and nonprofit piece of that. Um, from when you and I were in DC last year for the public sector summit, uh, it's, it is impressive how deep Amazon is going into these spaces, the affinity they have, and uh, really you know, how happy the customers are. Uh, to be able to move fast. So, you know, when you think about nonprofits and think about education, innovation is not the first thing that usually comes to mind because uh, budgets are tight and I don't have enough people and usually you've got, you know, whatever's left over. Um, but imagine is them, you know, how do we move these forward? How do we, you know, we know we need to help transform education. It's, uh, you know, so important to train the next generation. So, uh, you know, imagine there are some great stories that come out of that. You know, Jeff Frick loves getting those stories, helping us tell those stories through the CUBE platform. 
uh, and so it's the second year we're doing that show. Yeah, so we'll be covering that, and then of course reInvent. We'll have two sets again at uh, at, at reInvent this yeah, the, year. The, the so. Super Bowl of our industry, I right? Suppose. For sure. A um, couple things going on. So uh, unfortunate incidents in Southern California, big earthquakes. We have actually multiple earthquakes, right? You had the the physical earthquake, and then you had Kawhi Leonard going to the to the to the Clippers. That's kind of another <laughs> earthquake. But so. I'm interested in um, sort of poking at this notion of ground station. So at reInvent last year, Amazon announced uh, Amazon Ground Station, which essentially was ground station as a service. So if I understand it, one of the challenges, okay, you, you launch these satellites, but you still need a ground station to collect the data and then upload it and analyze it. That's what AWS is, is, is partnering to put in infrastructure uh, that allows you to essentially rent ground station infrastructure, so you don't have to worry about building it and securing it yourself, because you think about it, it's, it's got to be a secure location, you got to have fencing, you got to have physical security, you got to get the data in, you got to upload it to, the, to, to wherever you're going to upload it. So Amazon is basically building this service out saying, don't worry about the ground station piece, rent that from us. You know, swipe your credit card and you'll have ground station as a service, and then we'll ingest that data, upload it to the cloud, and then apply all of the tooling that we have to allow you to analyze that data. So if you think about the earthquake uh, 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 devastation, if you don't have a ground station there, you can, in theory, go to AWS and actually spin up a ground station, ingest, you know, on the ground, you know, the ground truth, as we like to sometimes talk about, um, and actually get satellite imaging and telemetry in that region. Um, you know, this comes into play at things like forest fires and all kinds of of natural uh, disasters. Yeah, yeah, Dave, even at the Remark show, I attended a session where one of Amazon's partners was talking about not only just getting the satellite data down, but just as they have the snowball edge today, which is you know for you know IoT or some remote sites, but some of these satellites are going to have the compute and the storage at in the satellites themselves. So if you think about, I'm going to have these geosynchronous satellites, I'm going to have all this connectivity, and if I can get a gigabit of ethernet, uh, you know, traffic, you know, going to the satellites, um, and I can do the processing at the edge, which is now up in space, uh, I can process that, and you know, th that edge that we talked about gets a whole nother dimension, you know, off the, <laughs> off the terra firma, uh, to be able to do those kind of analysis, as you said, earthquakes, uh, you know, all, the, all of the climate discussion that's going on, uh, we should be able to have tap into even more resources um, and uh, we'll have to rename cloud if it even goes beyond the earth, I think. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and then um, Outpost is the other um, uh, uh, story that we've been tracking. We're tracking a lot of stories, but, but Outpost is starting to ship in beta form. We've seen instances of it yeah, out there. So, we've, so we've seen it. We just did a little quick write-up right, about I, it. I mean, Dave, you know, just a ripple went through the industry when they showed, hey, here's a rack. And what's made, they're like, this is the exact same rack that we have in the Amazon data centers, and why it's a little surprising, because we're not allowed to see inside the Amazon data center, so it's like, oh, okay, this is what their compute is. Oh, wait, it's a 24-inch rack as opposed to a 19-inch rack. Um, but that line between the public cloud and my on-premises environment absolutely is blurring, so everybody wants to see where Amazon's going. They have the big partnership with VMware. VMware is already shipping the solution that is the same software, uh, for that VMware on AWS in my data center. So, um, you know, I can have, you know, the, the Dell hardware with the VMware code, or I can have the Amazon hardware with the VMware code uh, coming later this year with Outpost. So, uh, that line uh, between public and private is absolutely blurring, and where do my applications live? You know, that, that future of how fast does AWS continue to grow? Absolutely, there are applications and data and things that will stay in my own you know, data center and under my control, but that line is definitely blurring and there's going to be some re-architectures. It's definitely still going to take a couple of years to sort some of th these things out, but uh, we are at some of those inflection points where we'll see some of the massive change. Yeah, so I, I wrote a, a post that it's up on Wikibon kind of analyzing that video and, and there's some interesting things that are unique. There's certainly a lot of goodness in there. Uh, not some of the things they talk about aren't completely unique to, to AWS, but they, the, you know, things like Nitro and their special virtualization engine and their special chip, um, and you want to get a look at that, you know, take a look at that video. And then Stu, uh, New York City Summit this week, um, we mentioned some of the innovations that we've seen up to date this year, a lot of talk I'm sure about the marketplace. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if there'll be any ripples, Dave, because the one half of HQ2 was supposed to be in New York City and now it's not. 
doesn't mean they don't have a strong presence in New York City. Uh, it, like London, I believe it's somewhere around 12 to 15,000 people. When I went to the New York City two years ago, it was quite impressive. It is a free show, which means if you're a customer, you get in for free. If you're a partner, of course, you're still paying for uh, everything that goes there. But uh, the regional summits are quite impressive and a great way to get in touch with Amazon and all that they're doing um, if you don't want to go to the Super Bowl itself, which is uh, you know 50,000 plus now. Uh, in Las Vegas towards the end of the year. Yeah, these are like mini reinvents, and they're actually you know, quite good. A um, lot of lot of practitioner focus, and you're gonna you're gonna see that in yep. New York City. I mean, Dave, what I always love about every Amazon show I go to, there are customers that are interested in learning new things. How can I do better with what I'm doing? But also, how can I you know change what I'm doing? How can I move forward? So even if it's not adopting the latest and greatest from AWS. The entire ecosystem is going there to meet with those customers and talk about digital transformation, you know, modern workforce, all of these hot trends definitely play out. Uh, Ground Zero is uh, the AWS uh, you know, marketplace. Yeah, and, and this is by design. As I said before, the pace of innovation is a, is a challenge for people. It's an adoption blocker. And so Amazon wants to educate and you know, share the knowledge so that they can get more adoption. Okay, Stu, um, thanks very much. Good luck this week. Uh, check out siliconangle.com for all the news. Thecube.net is where the videos uh, will, will live and uh, watch Stu and John Furrier and Corey Quinn live. And check out wikibon.com for all the research. Thanks for watching everybody. Dave Vellante and Stu Vinovan. We'll see you next time.